Hello guys, this is Code and Code, and this is video editorial for the problem KQuery taken from Spodge. So the problem is simple. You are given an array of size n and also k queries. In each query, you will be given a triplet i, j, and k, where i and j are less than or equals to n number of elements, and k can be anything, I guess. Um, yeah, k will be. Uh, less than equals to j minus i plus 1 so basically in the sub array i to j you have to return the number of elements oh yeah k can be anything sorry so basically in the range i to k in the array you have to return number of elements which are strictly greater than k and that is the problem so here you can see the test case there are five integers 5 1 2 3 and 4 there are th uh, three queries the first query says 2 4 1 that means you have to find number of elements in the range 2 to 4 which are strictly greater than 1 so in the range 2 to 4 there are two numbers which are strictly greater than 1 so the answer is 2 similarly for the rest of the query result is 0 and 3 so as you might already know that now now from now on instead of directly showing you the co uh, explaining you the solution i try to give you some hints so for this problem uh, first of all i'm assuming that you are uh, that you are already well aware of segmentaries or uh, segmentary how the queries work on segmentary and also the merge sort tree i have explained all of these things segmentary point update range update and then merge sort tree all of these i have explained in my segmentary course so if you are not aware of those algorithm first i advise you to learn from there because this is merge sort tree and to get to this point you must start from segmentary so link of the course to the segmentary i'll be posting in the description of this video so make sure you have already studied segmentary first now I'm assuming that you are well aware of merge sort tree because the hint is think in terms of merge sort tree how you will solve this problem using merge sort tree. Let's continue. So what we will be doing is of course we will be building merge sort tree. So the first node contains the information about all of the whole range that is 1 to n. So the first node contains all of the elements in the range 1 to 5 but as you can see this is not the ith element in the input is not equal to the ith element in this uh, node because if you remember from the lecture in merge sort tree we have seen that uh, the information that we store the element that we store should be in sorted order so we we keep the things in sorted order it always depends upon the the thing the query you want to answer if you want to answer how many elements are greater than this or smaller than this so it, it is a better idea to keep the elements in sorted order that is why i'm having the elements in sorted order so uh, first node represents the whole range one to five that is why we are having all of the elements from one to five in sorted order now the left represent one to three right right represents four to five in the range four to five there are two elements three four that is why here we are having 3 4 in the range 1 2 3 we are having 5 1 2 that is why we are having 5 1 2 but in sorted order now the range 1 2 3 would be divided into 1 2 2 and 3 2 3 so element 3 2 3 is 2 only 1 2 2 is 1 and 5 again sorted order and so on so this is merge sort tree so first of all what we will be doing we will be building the merge sort tree how to implement merge sort tree i have already explained in the uh, segmentary course as well so uh, there should there should not be a problem for you now how we would be answering the query see suppose we were having the uh, we were to answer the first query 2 4 1 the answer should have been 2 now in the range 2 to 4 from here to here we have to count the total number of elements which are strictly greater than 1 so of course we would be doing the exact same thing that we do with the segmentary first of all we will be starting from uh, root node the range of the root node is 1 to 1 to 5 and our query range is 2 to 4 the range does not uh, doesn't lie completely inside our query range so what we will be doing we will be doing two recursive calls left and right because there is uh, intersection between the query range and the range of this node so we will be making two recursive calls left and right so suppose we first made right recursive call 3 to 4 
uh, sorry, 4 to 5. This represents this node represents the range 4 to 5. Again, our query range is 2 to 4. So, of course, what will happen if if uh, since this range doesn't lie completely inside a query range and there is certain intersection so we would make two recursive calls left and right we'd make right recursive call first and since the right recursive calls goes to range 5 comma 5 which is completely outside our query range 2 comma 4 so since this is completely outside our range so we would return zero so this you might remember from must or tree course so i'm not going in details of that so let me show you just how to code this first of all there are two array i'm using first for storing values of each uh, basically the input array and this is segmentary but segmentary this time uh, each node of segmentary represents a array a vector that is why uh, i have taken an array of vi vi is vector of int basically each each node now represents a list or, or a vector so that is why it is uh, an array of vector now in the main function we are reading n and then running a loop from 1 to n each time uh, reading input in val array after that we are building so building the segmentary how building goes this is same as exactly the same what i have explained in the merge sort tree implementation part so so if segment uh, this represents segment index in the merge sort tree this is segment start segment end so if segment start is equal to segment end of course uh, it represents only a single element if it represents a single element like like this you are on this or this or this so in their list in their uh, vector there should be a single element which is represented by that index itself so if segment start is equal to segment end then in this list we are going to insert only a single element which is the value of the current uh, segment start or segment end whatever you can refer to that index so value of that index will be inserting in the segmentary and simply returning this is the base case after that if there is not if this is not the case that is segment start is not equal to segment end that means uh, first we need to build basically when segment start is equals to segment end you are at this point and at this point the only thing you need to insert is the value of that index itself so this represents one comma one range one comma one that means the value here would be value at index one in the input array similarly this represents range uh, three comma three so the value here would be the value at index three in the input and so on but when segment start is not equal to segment end that means you are somewhere uh, you are not at this place but somewhere around this place so suppose you were here so what you would do first you would build the left subtree and the right subtree and then you would build this current node so if segment start is not equal to segment end we would come here first of all we'll calculate mid and then we'll build the left subtree and the right subtree after that we'll be merging the left subtree and the right subtree into the current subtree node and that is what is happening here you see uh, the left subtree is one two uh, one five and the right subtree contains two and then this node is actually the merge of these two so it will become one two five and that is what is happening here i'm merging the left uh, the the vector of left subtree and the vector of right subtree into the current node current node vector and this is the merge function it takes three parameters a b and c and merge both the vectors a and b into c in sorted order in linear time this is the same merge step that you uh, follow in uh, merge sort after that the build function is completed after that we'll be reading q queries each time we have, we'll be reading l r and k and then we would be making a function called to query passing one as segment index if you remember uh, this is exactly like query in segmentary first of all we will be having segment index then segment start segment end query start query end and then this time we also need k that is why k is also passed so segment index segment start segment end because the first node represents the whole range one to n that is why segment start is one segment end is n and then query start query end that is l and r and finally k so what happens when there is a complete uh, 
when the current range is completely outside your query range in that case if the current range is segment start segment end and query range is query start query end if the current range is completely outside our query range that means if the segment starts after the query ends or the segment ends before the query start you would return zero if that is not the case if the current segment is completely inside your query range that we then we would make a binary search so if the segment start is greater than or equals to query start and segment end is less than or equals to query end basically the current range completely lies inside the query range so suppose there, there was a, a query of 1 comma 5 and 2 that means in the range 1 to 5 find all of the elements which are strictly greater than 2 so basically we will be coming here and this represents 1 to 5 which lies completely inside our query range 1 to 5 and now this represents the whole range now we have to find the number of elements in this vector which are strictly greater than 2 now since the array is sorted you can apply binary search so apply binary search on here so uh, and in c++ you can apply upper bound so upper bound what do, what it does so if you apply upper bound on 2 that means it would return in this array it would return the iterator to the first element which is strictly greater than 2 so strictly greater than 2 uh, the first element which is strictly greater than 2 is 3 so it would return iterator to 3 now how many elements are greater than this of course you can get it by subtracting the iterator from vector dot n so let me show you what is happening here so first of all if the query uh, if the current segment completely lies inside the query range we return uh, vector dot n minus upper bound to k now what is happening here let me show you suppose this was the area okay so this is the vector Vec uh, st of si as i represents a vector so this is the vector on which we want to apply upper bound so what would happen here is that uh, in the vector if these are the values stored there is an extra value which is which rep which is being represented by vector dot and so this represents the end of the vector now when we make uh, an upper bound call to say 2 it would return iterator to this because first of all the array must be sorted and since we are working on my sort tree and we have uh, stored all of the nodes in sorted manner that is why the whole array is sorted so sorted so we can apply binary search first of all when i applied upper bound so on say k so it would find in this vector it would find the first element which is strictly greater than k so in this case suppose k was 2 so it would return the iterator to this element now if we remove it from mp dot uh, sorry from vector dot n if you remove this iterator from vector dot n it would basically return the distance between these two iterator so the end of iterator is here the first iterator is here if you remove if you find the distance between these two the distance comes out to be four and that is the number of elements strictly greater than k and that is why to find the number strictly greater than k what we are doing we are from st dot n st of si dot n basically vector n we are subtracting the iterator found or returned by upper bound so we are making upper bound upper bound is basically a binary search we are applying binary search on this vector and passing k so basically it would return the number of elements in this vector or in this vector which are strictly greater than k and we would return that if neither the current range is completely inside our query range or the current range is completely outside our query range so what we do in segmentary we make two recursive calls and that is what is happening here we would make two recursive calls first to left child from ss to mid initially the range was ss to se that is segment start to segment end now the new range would be for left it would be segment start to mid and for right it would be mid plus one to segment end the rest would be the same uh, query start query and k would be the same and that is what we do in segmentary so if there is no if the current se uh, segment completely lies 
outside our query range, we would return 0. If the current segment is completely inside our query range, we would return, uh, we would apply binary search and return the total number of elements which are strictly greater than k. And if none of these two happen, that means you would make two recursive calls first to the left and the right child, and that is how we are answering queries. So, this was how you solve this problem. If you have any doubt or query, of course, you can ask on the article that I've created for this course. Answering there is a bit easy for me instead of answering on the uh, YouTube comment section. So, thank you guys for watching. Until the next video drops, keep coding. Thank you.